We are live. Hello, hello, everybody. How are you? Okay, first of all, Cecilia, you're grounded. <laughs> Those of you who are in YouTube land know what I'm talking about. Sorry, Matt. I got something on my lip. The rest of you have no idea what I'm talking about. Cecilia just pointed out in the chat here. Can you believe there's only nine more shopping days until Christmas? <gasps> no. <laughs> Stop it. You hush your mouth. You hush your mouth right now. <laughs> I am not ready. I'm not. I'm not ready. Are you? Nine days. Shh. No, 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 no. We, we can't talk about that. <laughs> like, I know it's close. But I'm not done. I'm not ready. <laughs> and she writes this big old nine here in the chat. And I'm like, please. No, it can't be so. Tell me it's not. Nine more days to shop for Christmas. Oh, my gosh. I don't have enough time. Right? Kimberly says, oh, goodness, I haven't bought one gift. That's what I'm like. I've bought more than one. I, I didn't get my nails done. I'm Christmassy. Um, I've, I've got more than one gift done, but I'm just not quite ready. I've got everybody taken care of except for Q. I and I like I don't know what to get him. I do not know what to get him. He had his Christmas shopping done weeks ago. I'm like <laughs> I'm just sitting over here like <laughs> what 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 day is it? I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I don't know. Send me suggestions. All right, hi everybody. Sorry about the panic there, but when I saw that come through, I was like 9 days just seems a little scary to me. <laughs> All right. I'm glad I'm not the only one who's not ready. So it's Friday. Let's, let's take a, let's take a breather from the Christmas holiday stress and let's talk about our feel good Friday show. It is feel good Friday. And though there are only nine days left to shop for Christmas, you can shop today and not worry about Christmas. You can be thinking about your new year. Cause that's kind of what I'm thinking about as far as jewelry is concerned. Um, <laughs> I'm not necessarily uh, thinking about Christmas jewelry at this point though. Um, there's nothing wrong with those last minute jewelry gifts, which is probably what's going to end up happening with me. I'll be in here feverishly like putting things together. Um, but I digress. <laughs> Let's talk about Feel Good Friday. <clears throat> Cindy says she's got me on the big TV. That's terrifying, and I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't watch it on a phone, so I can't even imagine what I look like on a big TV. I never, ever watch myself. All right, so for those of you who are unfamiliar, it is Feel Good Friday. It's my favorite day of the week. And on Feel Good Friday shows, we like to feel good. It is all about fun and easy instant gratification jewelry that you can very easily put together. And I help with that by making everything available in today's show available for purchase over in my Etsy shop. My team is here in the comments on Facebook and YouTube dropping links so that you can very easily get to all of the items in today's show. Now, speaking of items in today's show, I want to mention to you that uh, everything in the show is super simple. We keep it simple on Fridays, right? We keep it simple because I want you to go into the weekend feeling inspired. You have watched so many lives, not just mine, everybody else's lives out there throughout the week. I don't want you to go into the weekend bogged down by technique and trying to remember all of the things that you learned. I want you to go into the weekend knowing, you know what? I ordered some really fun and simple kits. Beautiful jewelry does not have to be a representation of every skill or technique I have ever learned. And while I'm waiting for those fun kits to make their way to me, I'm going to sit down in my workspace and I'm going to make something beautiful just for myself or for a family member or a friend. And it doesn't have to be super hard. So we stick with the basics. Uh, simple stringing, simple knotting, uh, simple wire, as in uh, simple loops and wrapped loops, nothing out of the ordinary, right? We keep it simple on Fridays. If you're looking for more technique-based things, then you definitely want to check out the Tuesday Lives that happen at 1 p.m. Eastern time every week, as well as my Hardwired group, which is a private Facebook group that you pay to be a part of where we focus on upper-level beginner to intermediate style projects. If you're curious about what it is that we do over in Hardwired, this week we did a two-part brace bracelet where we put together an amazing bangle bracelet with some wire weaving and it was a lot of fun. So 
if you're looking to up your skills, know that I do have um, something available for you to uh, to get those things as well. But we keep it easy on Fridays. All right. So before we get started, let's talk about a couple of housekeeping things other than the regular little spill that I just did. So first thing I want to mention to you guys is I just realized that um, I have the opportunity to stream over on Instagram. That just came across my desk uh, literally before I sat down to make this live. So we are not streaming on Instagram at the moment. However, um, I would like to take advantage of that. So starting next week, not only will we be streaming to Facebook and YouTube, but we'll also be streaming to Instagram, hopefully, if things go well. Um, so just keep that in mind as you are trying to make your choices about where the best place to watch me is. Um, because Instagram is now available through StreamYard, and I definitely want to take advantage of that. I have a very small community of people on Instagram, uh, mainly because I haven't spent a whole lot of time like cultivating my Instagram um, presence, but I need to be doing that more. So we're going to be taking advantage of that in the very near future. As uh as, as we move over to other social media platforms, we're also growing our team. We're going to be adding a new team member coming up next week, and you will probably recognize this person. I'm not going to mention them just yet, but I do want to let you know that our team is growing by one, and um, they will be making their way on board in the very, very near future. So be on the lookout for that. Third thing. Oh, I want to let you guys know to set your reminders for 4 p.m. Eastern time this afternoon for Maker Master over on artbeads.com. Please don't forget about the new Art Beads stream because it is so much fun. And last week was my first official stream that wasn't it from the warehouse. Um, and guys, we hit it out of the park. Our presence, our community presence was absolutely huge. And I want to see that continue. I'm really excited about my relationship with Art Beads. And I absolutely appreciate everybody's support in that. So um, don't forget to set your reminders. Come on over and hang out with us, guys. It's going to be an amazing, growing, blossoming, blossoming relationship over there. Right now, it is me. Becky Dahl and Julie Bean, we are the team members, uh, part of the, the maker community there. However, that maker community is growing. We have recently added Tam, uh, Tammy Hahnemann, who is going to start her live next week, I believe on Wednesday. So you want to set your reminders for all of those. You want to be sure you're getting Becky, you're getting Julie, you're getting me, you're getting Tammy. And let me tell you, that's just the tip of the iceberg. There are some amazingly talented other designers that are going to be joining what is already an amazingly talented team. So if you are looking for the top of the top when it comes to jewelry designs and lives and having access to free content, you want to subscribe to Art Beads. You, you want to sign up for the newsletter. You want to check the website as often as you possibly can. You want to go back and watch those videos on replay. And you want to be a part of that amazing community. Because basically what I've done is I've taken our community and just kind of picked us up and moved us over there and dropped us down. And it's going to be as fun as what we do here. Except that you're going to have access to more designers than just me and they're designers that you love already and if you don't you're going to be introduced to some that are incredible so please please come and be a part of that i cannot wait for tammy to get started on her lives and i gotta tell you lots of familiar faces are going to start showing up over on art beads and it's going to be incredible fun so definitely definitely want to join that don't forget set your reminders 4 p.m for my live today um, and I even have guys, I've got special guests coming onto my art beach lives, not today, but in the future. If you don't want to miss that, you don't, you don't want to miss it. So set your reminders for that and, uh, be sure that you're checking that out. Okay. So let's get right into it. I have some things in today's live that I think are going to interest a lot of you. So I want to start with the things, um, that I can show you from this direction, or at least talk about with you from this direction. First and foremost, the bead soup mixes have been restocked. There's about 20. That's not a lot. You guys grab them up like hotcakes. Whoever came up with that? I don't, I don't really even understand. Like, I don't like hotcakes. But <laughs> you guys grab those up super fast. So the bead soup has been restocked limitedly. Limitedly? I'm making up words now. 
And the acrylic bead soup is also restocked. There's only a handful of those. And the acrylic beads that are in this new batch of acrylic bead soup are incredible. They're beautiful. They are very high-end acrylics. So two of those things are up in the shop at the moment, including all of the kits I have for today. Third thing that I have for you guys are mystery grab bags. These are also limited edition. I have mystery grab bags. I want you to just take a look. I'm not going to open these. I'm not going to show you what's in them. So you're getting a little sneaky peeky here of what could be in your mystery grab bag. I will tell you that the contents of these bags are more than double what I have marked these as cost in my shop. Okay. You're getting full sized brand new products. This is not used stuff. These are brand new products, stuff from Silver Silk, stuff from Beetalon. Uh, there's a little bit of everything in these. No two bags are going to be the same. And you are most definitely helping me to clean out. Take advantage. Okay. So I've got mystery grab bags, as you can see. They are in the shop. Limited amount of those in the shop. Don't miss out on those because I don't know when I'll be able to restock those. Okay. Katie says, do I still work with Beetle On? Yes, I do. As a matter of fact, since you brought that up, I will be representing Beetle On starting in February. I will be back doing Michael's classes as a Beetle On designer. So <laughs> my schedule's a little full. But um, yeah. Oh, Wanda says she got a mystery bag. <laughs> Martha says it's like a Christmas stocking. I know. I'm so excited. There are no links for the bead mixes. Yes, there are. The bead mixes went up yesterday. There are. Just double check, Nicole. They're there. Um, because they were renewed, I will double check. But because they were renewed, they're not. They didn't go up with the listings this morning or just a little while ago. Um, but let me double check because they've been selling. So I know that the listings are there. Hold on. Let me just make sure. Yeah, they're there. They're there. They're selling. <laughs> They're there. Okay. All right, everybody. Just in case you're curious, if you see me chatting, that's Nicole. <laughs> Nicole is, is acting as me on Facebook. So um, that, that's Nicole, if you're looking for Nicole. All right. So whew, those are things that are already there. Now I'm going to show you, well, I mean, everything's already there, but now I'm going to show you the things that are in the show, guys. I've got a bunch of do-it-yourselves. I've got a bunch of beautiful kits and I've got a maker mix. I'm going to turn you around and show you the maker mix and we are going to get started. So for those of you who are unfamiliar with the maker mixes, they are small batches of beady goodness, things I don't have enough of to make a full kit out of, but I still want to share them with you because they're fun and they're beautiful and, um, they're fabulous. So this is our maker mix for the week. This one is called Winter Mint. It kind of reminded me of um, like vanilla mint flavored candy canes. Have you ever had a vanilla mint flavored candy cane? I think they are, they're, they're, I like them better than regular peppermint. That's just me because I kind of like the vanilla. Um, but that's what this reminded me of. So this has, is almost all Check glass. There's a little bit of faceted glass in here, but for the most part, these are big old pieces of check glass. So you've got some check glass flowers, some check glass drops, check glass petals, some check glass little, um, these little nugget things. I'm not quite sure what they are. Some check glass rondelles. Absolutely beautiful. So this is the winter mint maker mix for the week. All right. Going to sit this to the side. We're going to keep going. We're not stopping. we got a lot of things to get through in today's show. All right, so next up, I'm going to show you guys all the true do-it-yourself um, kits that are in the shop because I've got a lot of these. These have been selling really, really well, so I'm just going to keep it going. If it's not broken, I'm not going to fix it. You know what I'm saying? I want to keep up with these because everybody seems to really love these. And let me turn my paper over here so I can see because I don't want to misname these. All right, so the first one that I have for you guys is the Blown Glass true do it yourself. Now, let me explain these to you for those of you who are unfamiliar with these. So, what these are, they're very similar to maker mixes except they're a little bit higher end than the maker mixes, like they have more specialty things and pieces in them. It's basically a kit that doesn't have any of the findings, right? Because I know a lot of you have a ton of findings at your disposal and you just want the beads. You don't want the whole kit. So, I've got both things going on now. 
So let me show you this one. I thought this one was absolutely beautiful. I've been hanging on to these blown glass beads for a while. So these are 100% handmade. They are blown glass. They're absolutely stunning. So this was the focal choice here. And with these, I usually just give you a little bit of inspiration. There is also some beautiful electroplated lava beads in here as well. There are some crackle agate. There are some little check melons with the same kind of little striping that our blown glass bead has. There are some ruby nuggets or chip beads. There are a couple of pieces of peach moonstone. And then the rest of this is just a mix of garnets because garnets are always a good idea. This is not gonna be the only time you see garnets in today's show. This is the first little, a true do it yourself. So this one is the mystery grab bags are sold out. Are you serious? No way. That, that, wow. Okay. I don't even know what to say. Are you sure, Brenda? Are you sure? Double check. <laughs> Double check because there were a lot. There were a lot. That That's surprising to me. Okay. So the do it yourselves, like I mentioned, these little kits don't have any of the findings with them. It's just the beady goodness. And then I give you a little bit of inspiration. And this one, I wasn't entirely sure for myself exactly what it is that I would do with this one. Uh, I really was feeling necklace. However, you most definitely can create bracelet out of this, but I wanted this obviously to be in the front. Now I'm not sure if I want to work it this direction or this direction, but if you guys will remember the project that we did on Tuesday um, with uh, Rachel, I, I did a project where I used a cabochon this direction and then did like some hanging chain and then did a little something right from it. So like you could do the same thing here, maybe using one of the peach moonstone pieces um, or not, but these garnets, you could create like a multi-strand design because the garnets come in a couple of different sizes. So you could do like a small strand of faceted garnets and then you could do your outer edges with the larger gar garnets if you wanted to. And but please first put me on a desktop. <laughs> Robot is in a mood today. I'm about to have to put him in the drawer. You've also got enough of these electroplated lava beads so that you could like create some matching earrings if you wanted to. Maybe not with the crackle I get, but maybe you could use the peach moonstone with those. Just a really pretty little mix. I'm feeling like two layer necklace with a drop of some variety. Like you could even do a pretty little drop by stacking up your little ruby chips if you wanted to and maybe putting a garnet at the bottom. Like I'm seeing all kinds of fun things. You could also do a double strand bracelet with this as well. So um, yeah, so this was our first one. This was our blown glass, true do it yourself with lots of yummy gemstones in this one. So I'm gonna sit this one to the side because we've got a lot more of these to go through. All right, so there's that one. If you love garnets though, I've got another garnet one for you. Here's the last little look at this one. If you wanna see garnets and rubies and moonstone, oh my so pretty all right next up this one also has garnets in it this one is garnets and pearls and this one has mother of shell pearl leaves in it you guys oh my gosh they're so pretty now not only do they have those but they have a full strand of garnets and then two quartz so there's some pink quartz and then some freshwater pearls this might be my favorite out of all of them today, just because I love the combination of the um, the mother of pearl shell leaf and the garnet strand. So you're getting the full strand of garnets, which I believe is a is a um, it's about 12 inches. It might be more like a 13 inch strand. I'm not sure. I just know that it's a ton of garnets. You get the whole strand, and then the mother of pearl shell leaf. Now. The leaves you can use either direction. I have found that the back side of these, because I consider this the flat side the back, I see the back side of these, they're not necessarily all that pretty. Some of them have like these places in them, but I mean, you have to understand like they're made from mother of pearl. So, I mean, that's what, but this side, that is what I'm talking about right there. That color shift, all of that is absolutely beautiful. You get the veining in the leaf, which I love, which you don't get on the other side. Some of, of the ones have a perfectly perfect 
like backside to them. Others don't, but they all have a really pretty front side with the veining on it. So I was definitely seeing necklace with this because this is a beautiful, a beautiful necklace all by itself, right? I mean, you don't even have to do anything different to this, just restring it. But if you wanted to pop in some of these little baby freshwater pearls, how beautiful would that be? So pretty. You've got some larger ones too. So if you wanted to like swap them out kind of restring you could do a double strand if you wanted to or you could restring you've got these two pink quartz you could make some earrings to go with if you wanted to but this one's probably my favorite there are a lot of other really beautiful ones in the show but i loved this one the most and i was really excited to um get to share this one with you guys so that is another one of our beautiful do it yourselves all right <laughs> wanda <laughs> I even heard that in Mr. Crab's voice, okay? <laughs> All right, sitting this one over to the side. All right, let's keep going. I've got another one for you. This one is the Brass Nautilus. This one is kind of cool. To, I mean, they're all cool, honestly. This one's got a nun design Nautilus pendant in it, which is a nice, like, substantial pendant. And it's got some green aventurine and then some white check as well as a tassel. And I was kind of thinking with this one. Now, again, I'm just giving you, like, some inspiration and you get to come up with, with what you want to do. But if you're looking for a little inspiration, the way I was kind of feeling this was I was like, putting the tassel out and either maybe hanging them side by side or maybe layering them so that the tassel was underneath. I'm not real sure, but I was kind of thinking that's how I wanted that to go. Then there's a big chunky piece of a venturine that they could drop from, or you could build, build a drop if you wanted to, like to make this really long. You've got some larger aventurine beads, some smaller aventurine in here, and you have some white check glass, which is kind of hard to come by. I'll be honest with you. White check glass is, it's not something I ever have a lot of. And then you've got some, some um, daisy spacers that you could pop in anywhere you wanted to. I was kind of seeing this as a necklace just because these are a little bit large. So making them chains on a bracelet might be a little too much, but I mean, it's totally up to you, right? Totally up to you. So this one is all you get in this one, super, super pretty. All right, I'm gonna sit this one to the side. So if you've got spring or summer on the brain, like you you need a pick me up, this is a good one. Cause I know we're in the middle of winter, right? Well, middle of fall, almost winter. It's cold enough here to be winter, so. But there's that one. And guys, I wanna tell you a little something about your tassels when you get them. If your tassel gets bent in shipping, if you will take an iron or a ribbon straightener, I believe it or not, that is a thing. And those of you who are crafty know, um, but you can take an iron and put it on the very lowest, lowest setting and you can iron your tassel back out flat. Um, Cause sometimes they get bent and look silly. You know, by the time you get them, you're like, what am I supposed to do with this? I wouldn't use it. So lay it out and just hit it with a very cool iron and it will flatten it back out. Just be careful. Don't turn it up too much because they will melt. All right, sitting that one to the side. We are not stopping. We've got so much more to go. I've got two more do-it-yourselves for you guys. So this one, if you love lapis, I've got this one for you guys. This one I definitely was seeing as a bracelet. So this one's got a vintage charm. This is an Art Deco vintage charm, which is really beautiful. And then we've got a mix of lapis in a couple of different sizes and then some chat glass in black which I thought was just like a very classy kind of mix so I was definitely seeing this one as a bracelet I um but you do you right you get to be the creative one but I was thinking like laying out all of the pieces of lapis and then popping these beautiful chat glass rounds in between because they have that a b finish so there's like a little sparkle to these that I thought was just lovely, right? And then putting this guy either as a charm on the in the center, like off center next to the barrel or at the end with another little dangle. So that's kind of how I was envisioning this one, but totally up to you. All I know is that the lapis in this one is really, really yummy. 
Sometimes you get lapis and the blues are kind of washed out and it almost looks like soda light. The blues in this are really deep and beautiful. Wow. And that deco charm from Vintage, I am obsessed with. Wow. I have more of these. So you're going to see these in probably some more kits. They're really, really nice. All right. One more. And then we're going to move on to the, the kits with the findings. All right. This is the last one. This one is our blue gold stone do it yourself this one has a cosmic theme to it so this one's got a moon and star connector there are several well there's four daisy spacers in here and then the rest of this is blue goldstone which in the pictures does not come across very well but it 100 is blue goldstone this is another one where i was seeing bracelet with this where this guy could be in the center or you know how sometimes we do like um a, a design where I've got the big beads and then they get a little bit smaller and then we put our clasp here. So you can actually do that this way or you could do this that way if you wanted to. This one's also got some chip beads in here. So if you wanted to stack your chip beads up and make a little section of your blue goldstone chip beads, you could do that and then finish it out with the round ones and there's plenty. So you probably haven't like enough to save two for earrings. If you wanted to go pop your Daisy spacers in there, if you wanted a little extra metal, I don't know. You guys are going to come up with something incredible. This was just kind of what I was feeling with this one. Um, I do know that the celestial theme or the category of jewelry is still super, super popular. And the reason that I know that other than the fact that I keep up with those things, um, or at least I try to is I've got a, a 13 year old, she's going to be 14 next week or next month and celestial space themed jewelry and clothing is super popular in her age group. And I think into the twenties. So if you're looking for something that is on, um, on trend right now, celestial type things are, are all over the place, which I like just all, all the time. It doesn't have to just be when it's trending, uh, moons and stars for me, never go out of style and neither does blue gold stone. I'm <laughs> just saying. All right. All right. So we'll set that to the side. Okay. Now let's get into it. We've got kits. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six kits for you guys that actually do have the findings. So these are different than the ones that I just showed you. These actually have all of the pieces that you need to create the full piece of jewelry. All right. So I've got, I'm going to start with earrings. I've got beautiful earrings for you guys in purple. I was feeling the purple. So these are our purple check glass earrings. Let me show you. These are so pretty. So these have these beautiful like crystal cut check glass rondelles and the leaves. So let's put these together, shall we? All right, I'm gonna show you. We're gonna use the cheat method with our leaves. So I'm gonna take my wire and I'm gonna thread my check glass leaf on and I don't want to bring it to the middle just because I don't like to have that much waste. This is way more wire than you need, by the way. But I'm going to have a short wire and a long wire. I'm going to take the short wire. I'm going to bend it upwards, kind of following the natural path of the bead, turn it over in my hand, and I'm going to do the same thing with the other wire. So my wires are now crisscrossing over the top of the leaf. All right, now I'm going to come in with my pliers. I'm going to take the long wire. And I'm going to bend it straight up and down, and I'm going to take the short wire, and I'm going to just give it the slightest bend so that it's going out this direction. Okay, now I'm going to take the short wire, and I'm going to wrap around the longer wire about three times. We're going to make this look like A wrapped loop, even though it's not going to be a wrapped loop, right? So we've got our wire wraps. Mine was a little off center. And then we're going to come in with our cutter tool and we're going to trim off. And we're going to take this rest of this wire. Now you've got enough. If you want to do a full wrapped loop and make your wraps meet, you absolutely can do that. But we're going to cheat, keep it easy. We're going to bend the wire 
We're going to come in with our cutter tool. We're going to trim off, leaving ourselves about a fourth of an inch of wire. And then we're going to use our round nose pliers to grab this and roll back. This is going to give the appearance of a wrapped loop when it is in, in actuality not a wrapped loop at all. It's actually a simple loop that you can now open and close, which is nice because you don't have to you don't have to worry about your wire wraps and meeting and that whole seamless look thing that can be stressful. Okay. All right. Now we're going to take an eye pin. We're going to open our eye pin up with a twist. We're going to thread on our loop that we just created and we're going to close that back. All right. Now we're going to thread on our faceted check. We're going to thread on the bead cap. We're going to thread on another bead cap going in the opposite direction. And then a rondelle. And we're going to finish that off with a bicone. And then you can either do a simple loop here or you can do a wrapped loop. It is totally up to you. I'm going to do a wrapped loop. So I'm going to come in with my chain nose pliers. I'm going to grab the wire. Just be gentle because you've got a, a bicone here. So I'm going to bend the wire over the top of the pliers. I'm going to come in with my round nose pliers. We're going up and over. Rotate the pliers and take the wire over to the other side. And then we're going to wire wrap in that space between the loop and the body cone. Y'all have got me worried about the grab bags. Like I'm, I'm, I hope that I listed this correctly. <laughs> Like, raise your hand if you got a grab bag in the comments, just to let me know that I listed them with more than just one, because I've had, a, in the past, I've made a listing and just added the quantity as one and didn't list all of them, because I am quite literally shocked that they're all sold out. I, I really am. I really am. So hopefully more than one of you got one, because otherwise I need to go in and fix them. <laughs> Okay, good. Cindy got one. Cecilia got one. So I know I did it right. Okay. 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 You're good. Thank you. <laughs> Kim got one. Leah got one. Thank you. All right. Now I know I did it right. Y'all just, y'all just jumped on those fast. Those are our earrings. It's, it's a purple to me, guys. Listen, it's a purple that everybody can wear because it's not like Crayola crayon purple. Like it's not, it's not this purple, <laughs> which actually looks blue. It's purple in her life. This is one of those soft purples that you can mix with browns. You can mix with black. You can literally mix this with just about anything. There are some things I wouldn't mix this with, but the tone of the purple is really going to work with so many different skin tones. So if you're a purple person, but you're like, I can't wear it because it washes me out. I think this is definitely a wearable purple. So there you go. All right. Now, if purple is your thing, I got another set of purple earrings for you. Let me show you. I love these equally as much as I love those. So these are just in gold, which is nice because some people prefer the gold. It's the same beautiful purple in a faceted check glass. They're shell coated pearls. And then of course those little bicones again. And we've got a little bit bigger of an ear wire for these. So let's put these together. We're gonna take a head pin. We're gonna thread on our fire polish round here. And it's got that beautiful flash to it, which is so nice. All right, we're going to thread on a bead cap. And just like our previous earring, we're going to thread on a bead cap going in the other direction. So there's that one. And then this one. Okay. And then we're going to drop down our shell coated pearl. And then another bead cap. Oops. Guys, I'll try to do the mystery grab bags again. Um, I just wanted to kind of test the waters. I don't have enough to do a ton of them the next time around, but I'll try to get one more, one more Friday out of those for sure. All right, and then a bicone. And then you can do a wrap loop or a simple loop, totally up to you. Also want to mention that these are the kind of ear wires where if you wanted to take your bicone or any other beads, you can actually slide these on and drop those down so that some of the beads are on the actual ear wire, which I love. So you can kind of change these up or add to them or whatever you want to do, right? 
All right, wrapped loop. So coming in with my chain loose pliers, spin the wire. Coming in with my round nose pliers, we're going up and over. Rotate, take the wire over to the other side. And then we're gonna wire wrap in that space. Oops. Okay. And then come in with my cutter tool to trim off. Just be careful. Again, it's a bicone on the top. So definitely want to be careful not to accidentally trim the top of your bicone. It happens, trust me. And then if you're tucking in your end, be careful with that as well. And then you're just going to add this to your ear wire. And once you get these, if you want to squeeze this little loop closed with your pliers, it'll keep your uh, dangle from traveling up the rest of the earring, right? And there are those. So, so pretty. I love these. I really, really do. They're sparkly and they're pretty and they're purple in a purple that is manageable, <laughs> right? They're just kind of classy. All right, moving on. So there are our earrings. I'm going to sit these over to the side. We're going to move on to bracelets. So I've got three bracelets for you guys. Um, actually, you know what? Let's let's do the necklace next. I thought I was going to do the bracelets next, but I'm going to do the necklace next because the necklace is super easy because I, um, I've already strung it. <laughs> so this one, guys, I had these strands of tourmaline. I had full strands and I have been sitting on these strands for probably four years. They've just been hanging. And I was like, I don't know what to do with these. I almost made this into a true do it yourself. And then I thought, you know what? That's not fair because I want to be sure that I give you the bead string wire that's going to fit through these because the hole on these is really small. So this is our tourmaline uh, choker necklace. Now it's a choker necklace because I used the full strand and it was still a little on the short side. I added extra beads to it. And then I've also included an extension chain and a Herkimer diamond. So let me explain. Okay. So this was just a simple stringing project. Okay. Where we did our, our wire guardian, our crimp, I thread on a metal bead just to give a little bit more length. And then I thread on all of the beautiful tourmaline beads in this, in these, I went directly from the strand to the, to the bead stringing wire. Okay. So that's, and I was like, there's no way I can do that in a live because it took me a while. There are little tiny beads. It takes a while to string all these up. You're getting the full strand in your kit. Okay. It's, it's a full strand. You'll see it in the picture of the listing. It's the full strand. I literally just did one bead at a time from the strand to my beading wire. Okay. So we, I did all of that in advance and then crimped the other end. Now, <clears throat> super easy peasy. I added some extension chain in a couple of different styles. So you've got some extension chain to make this longer because this is a choker style necklace. It's only about 16 inches when it's finished. Um, so you've got extension chain. However, once you get this home and if you want to add more length to this to make it not a choker, please do because i wish that the strands had been long enough to make them like 18 inch necklaces but they just weren't all right so to sweeten it just a little bit here's my hardware i added a herkimer diamond now if you don't are not familiar with herkimer diamonds please look these up they're um they're on the expensive side it looks like rose or not rose quartz it looks like quartz it's in that family look them up i only had a handful of them and they have this really interesting cut to them and I wanted to add that as the dangle to the extension chain. So we're going to attach that. So we're going to thread it on to a head pin and we're going to do a wrapped loop and we're going to attach it to the end of our extension chain. So bend the wire over the top of the pliers coming in, going up and over rotate take the wire over to the other side before we do the wire wraps though let's go ahead and attach this to the end of our extension chain so we're just going to slide those together and then i'm going to hold on to that loop with my bent chain nose pliers and we're going to wire wrap Up. 
And just like with your bicones, be gentle. <laughs> be gentle with these beads. All right. So now I'm going to come in with my cutter tool and I'm going to trim off a gently, gently, so gently that I'm probably just going to wiggle it because I don't want to, I don't want to mess up my bead here. All right. So there is the Herkimer diamond uh, at the end of your extension chain. And then the rest of this is literally just kind of putting it all together. Um, and it's, it's just attaching your hardware. So we're going to do jump ring. Attach, whoops, and our clasp. My other jump ring has jumped away from me. I'm not sure where it went. <laughs> Another jump ring here and then your extension chain. But since I don't know what happened to my jump ring, I'm just going to very gently open up the link on my chain here and attach it to my wire guardian. Because if you're looking for last minute gifts, this is absolutely a beautiful beautiful gift to give to somebody because they're getting gemstones without it costing an absolute fortune. They're getting the beauty of the tourmaline as well as that little pop of sparkle from the Herkimer diamond. It's just a beautiful, straightforward, check out these awesome beads kind of necklace. Really, really pretty. You've got the pinks and the greens and the blues and the blacks and the gold colors. Like everything that tourmaline has to offer all in one strand. I thought they were just beautiful. So I didn't want to like turn these into multi strand bracelets or anything. But listen, once you get the strand home, if it's too short of a necklace, even with the extension chain, add more beads to it, add extra jump rings to it, or turn it into whatever you want to. At least you're getting this really beautiful strand of tourmaline. Just know... The bead stringing wire is a super thin um, diameter, so it will go through. So you've got the bead stringing wire that'll go through it. If you plan on doing something other than making a necklace out of this, just keep that in mind. These beads are tiny, so the drill hole on them is very, very small. Um, so you want to restring these either on the beading wire that I, I have in the kit for you or something small. Okay, so, so pretty. All right, sitting this over to the side. All right, now let's move on to bracelets. So I've got three bracelets for you in varying styles here. We're going to start out with one that is pretty straightforward and easy. This one has some more of that gorgeous blue gold stone. So we're going to put together an easy peasy pumpkin squeezy little stringing project onto some wire with a couple of dangles because you know I can't not do dangles. All right, so you can put this together however you want to. So if you want to cut your chain, and, and assemble differently you can, but we're gonna take our piece of wire and we're gonna do a wrapped loop at the end, all right? So bending the wire, coming in with my round nose pliers. We're going up and over, rotate, take the wire over to the other side, and then we're gonna wire wrap. So essentially we're turning our piece of wire into an eye pin with a wrapped loop. Oops. Okay, then I'm going to come in with my cutter tool and trim off the excess. Okay, all right, now I'm going to thread my beads on and you can thread your beads on in whatever order you want to. You don't have to put them together the same way that I did. But if you would like to put them in the order that I used, we're going to do a metal bead. We're gonna do three of the smaller blue gold stone. Okay, look at the sparkle. They just look like outer space to me. I, I love them, I love them. All right, and then we're gonna do a metal bead that's got a little decorative flair to it. We're gonna do one of the larger blue gold stones. And then we're gonna do a bead cap. And we're gonna do three of the big ones. So there's one, two, and three. And then we're going to cap that with another bead cap. We're going to drop that down. And then we're just going to repeat our pattern. So here's the next size down, our metal bead. And then we're going to do our three smaller. So 
one, two, and three. And then we're gonna finish that with a metal bead and we're gonna do a wrapped loop, okay? Oops. Now again, please feel free to put these together in whatever <laughs> order you want. I have set aside a decorative metal bead, one of the small, um, smaller blue gold stones, and a tiny little daisy spacer. I've set these aside. If you want to incorporate those, you can, um, but I've left these out for dangles because you know how dangles are. <laughs> I got to always have the dangles. All right, so I'm going to do a wrapped loop. And for my wrapped loop... I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and, and attach my chain on one end. So I'm going to start bending my wire, come in with my round nose pliers. I'm going to go up and over, rotate, take the wire over to the other side. And then you can open your chain link if you want to. I'm just going to slide mine on just like so. And then hold on to my loop and the chain. And then I'm gonna wire wrap. Okay, then I'm gonna come in with my cutter tool, trim off the excess. All right, now I'm going to bend this into the shape that I want, which is more round for a bracelet. Okay, and then I'm going to attach here so if you want to split your chain and put your <laughs> if you want to split your chain in two and put your hardware in the middle you can i'm going to have my hardware up here to the side and i'm going to make a couple of little dangles so i put one of those small blue gold stone beads onto a head pin and did a wrapped loop then i'm going to do the same thing with my metal bead but my metal bead has kind of a large hole so I'm going to thread a daisy spacer on first and then my metal bead and I'm going to do a wrapped loop. Up and over, rotate, take the wire over to the other side. Dawn says, I got this month's bargain bead box. Does anyone know when Sarah does the bargain bead box live? I will be doing it very, very soon. So next week on Tuesday, I'm doing Sam's box. And then the Tuesday after that, I'm doing the bargain bead box. Um, I wanted to be sure that everybody got their boxes this time. Because last month when I did it, some people didn't have their boxes yet. And I felt awful because I spoiled the surprise. So I'm making sure everybody's got theirs this month before we do it. All right, so now I'm going to take jump ring, open that up, and I'm going to thread on my two dangles. I'm going to attach this to my chain, and I'm also going to attach my clasp. So there's that, and there's that. Close that up. And then I'm going to put my jump ring here. Is that the day after Christmas? It might. It may have to wait then. <laughs> I don't know if I'm doing a live the day after Christmas. Um, I'm going to do lives all the way up to Christmas. But I'll I'll have to get I'll have to double check the schedule. I, I didn't even realize we only had nine shopping days left. Okay, so this month is getting away from me very quickly. There is our bracelet. <laughs> now, if you want, once you get this kit home, if you want to um switch out the hematite colored chain for some silver, I get it. I just liked the mixed metal combo here because the um the blue gold stone is so dark. And when I put silver chain with this, it looked okay. But I felt like it was a little unbalanced. So that's why I went with the darker chain over the lighter chain. But again, you do you. When you get at home, you can put this together however you want to. Okay. So, Erlene, thank you so, so much. Oh, I'm so grateful for you. Happy holidays to you, too. Yeah. You're so, so sweet. I appreciate you so much. You have no idea. All right, guys. I'm going to sit this to the side. 
got another bracelet for you guys. Now this one goes together very similar to a bracelet that we did in the past. Um, but this one, hold on, I'm trying to pull up the picture here for myself. So it's a little different, a little different, but similar to a pink bracelet you guys may remember from the not so distant past. All right, so I've got a connector here. These are like literally the last of these kinds of connectors that I have in my stash. So it is a beautiful, it looks like a dogwood flower to me. Um, but then it's got the connectors on either side. <laughs> Kathleen says, aren't you going to be with your friends and family? I am. That's why I said, I don't know if I'm going to do the live after Christmas day because I, I will have family here. Um, but the feel good Friday show before Christmas, we're still doing that. We're still getting together next week. I'm not taking any time off next week. It's going to be a regular week next week. Now the week after that, I'm not so sure. I'll, I'll let you know. <laughs> I will let you know. Cause I will have family in, um, town, uh, next, not next week, but the week after. So we'll, we'll have to see. I will definitely keep you posted and I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna avoid my family. I promise I will take some, I will take a little bit of time, but I'm not going to stay away from you guys too long. I can't, I miss you too much. <laughs> All right. So we're using our big flower in our bracelet. We're going to put together this really pretty little design here. So our flower is going to go here. We've got two big faceted, beautiful sparkly beads that we're going to put on one side and then the rest of this we're going to do with some more sparkles but we're going to do kind of a faux double strand so we've got these faceted rondelles and we're going to do these in doubles and we're going to connect those with some big old jump rings okay all right so just kind of letting you know where we're going with this design. So we're gonna do uh, simple loops. So we're gonna go ahead and put our eggnog in your coffee. <gasps> Jessica, you have just opened up a whole new thing for me. I'm I'm literally going to leave here after the show and run to the gas station because it's like just right down the street and get some eggnog and put it in my coffee because that sounds incredible. <laughs> I used to have eggnog flavored creamer, but I think the real thing might be better. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to do a simple loop here. I'm going to come in with my cutter tool. Trim off. And roll back to create my loop. Okay. So I'm going to do simple loops on everything. All right. So our little crystal sections here with our rondelles. Those are also going to go onto eye pins. So it's three each onto an eye pin. And then you're just going to do a simple loop. Spin the wire coming in with our cutter tool trim. And roll back. Okay, and then we're going to do another one. It's so easy to make. Is it is like regular eggnog easy to make? Jack Daniels eggnog says Wanda. So I like to I like Mayfield just because Mayfield is um, is fairly local for us. Um, I, I'm kind of picky about my eggnog brand <laughs> to be honest. I went to three stores recently looking for the, the right brand of eggnog, um, but I've never made it myself. I've, I've always just been too scared to do it. But I mean, there's a first time for everything. I've been scared of a lot of things that I've done over the past two years that I didn't think that I could do. <laughs> and if you know, you know. <laughs> All right. So. You're going to do that with all of your little crystals. You're going to make four sections of your beautiful rondelles. Okay. And then the rest of this is just some assembly. So let's do that together. So first things first, we are going to take one of our big old jump rings here. We're going to twist and we're going to attach that to one of the connectors on the back of our flower. Okay. And then we're going to thread on 
two of our little rondelles. And we're going to twist to close that back. Get a good closure on that. Make sure there's not any openings because you don't want these to sneak out on you. Okay. All right. We're going to open another. And we're going to thread this on to the other ends of the rondelles that are there. And then we're going to thread on two more before we close it. Okay. And then close that back. On one hand, I'm not ready for Christmas because I'm not I'm not done with the Christmas shopping. But on the other hand, I really am looking forward to having the family in my house. There's just something really kind of, I don't know. I don't know. I, I think it's because my life has changed so much. And the family that I have now is so different than the family that I had before. With Q's mom here and Q's brother here. And, and our house fills up with friends and more family. And like, just the feeling that I get from all of that, like it makes me really happy that Christmas and Thanksgiving are so close together. Cause everybody was here for Thanksgiving. I was so stressed out about it because, oh my gosh, my house is full of people. But once they're here, I, it just feels like, it just feels like it's, they were always supposed to be my family. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? And so that part of all of it, having the presence under the tree and the lights and all the people and, you know, and Q's brother playing video games and Q's mom and me hanging out in the kitchen. And there's just something about it. I, I'm really excited. <laughs> I'm stressed, but I am also very excited about all of it. Okay. Okay. So we get to the end of this and we're going to thread on two jump rings, two regular size jump rings, mind you. <laughs> it's stressful to have a lot of people in your house, but at the same time, like there's nothing like it and you don't do it all the time. So as stressful as it is, it's like, you know what, I'm just going to enjoy this and be blessed that I have all of these people here, that they like me enough to be with me. You know what I mean? And remember that they don't care if your baseboards are perfect. They don't care if your husky chewed a hole in the drywall. They don't care. Like they're literally there to spend time with you. And that to me is just, there's nothing like it. It's, it's a, it's a, a feeling that it's exactly what the Christmas is supposed to feel like. You know what I mean? All right. So I did two just to, just to kind of, transition from like this big to small if that makes sense to you you don't have to do two jump rings here if you don't want to i just kind of liked um the the way that that felt and that's actually that's it right here on this side okay that's going to be where our clasp attaches now over here on the other side of this i'm going to use another set of jump rings It's just so nice from what my Christmases used to be. Um, not that, what am I even doing? <laughs> Y'all got me. I'm like, I'm, I'm getting all sentimental here. And like, now I don't know what I'm doing with myself. Like my Christmases in a past life were very different um, from what Christmas is now. And um, I'm just, I'm so thankful. I really am just, there's no other way to explain it. I'm just, I'm just thankful. And as stressful as it is, I, I love it. You know, I love it because it's such a, it's such a big symbol of how much my life has changed uh, for the better. So it's, it's just, it's nice. All right. Last but not least, we're going to attach our clasp. So you can see I've got my two big crystals on this side. This is where the clasp is going to go. You can put this together however you want to. You really, really can. I just kind of liked the look of this kind of asymmetrical. Okay. 
cup pretty. Now you can add extra jump rings to this if you need it to be a little bit bigger. You can take a section out if you need it to be a little bit smaller. Okay, just simple, straightforward, simple loops with this. And it's literally just put together with large jump rings. So Susie, mine is two. And that's, I think that's why I love having Q's family and all of our friends around now. Because when I was growing up, my family was huge, like huge. We had aunts and uncles and cousins, and we would all get together at my grandparents' house. And now it's like me and my mom, you know, like that whole big family thing. My grandparents passed away. Everybody kind of split off and did their separate things. And so big family is I've been missing. Um, and so now I have big family and it's people that I like. <laughs> so it's all of those wonderful people and me and my mom. And I, 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 I just, I, I really, I really love it. I really do. It kind of reminds me of, of Christmas with my grandparents, but different and in a good way, you know? All right. So that is that bracelet. If you're looking to sparkle, for the holidays or you're wanting to sparkle into the new year, this is it. This is most definitely a sparkly bracelet. Oh, <laughs> All right. I've got one more bracelet for you and then we are going to be done. Now this bracelet, I'm only going to do a very short, short version of this because we have done this over and over and over again, many, many times, many, many ways. And I'm going to show it to you. So this is the sample. Okay, already ready for you. I'm just going to show you the steps and that's all. We're not going to do the whole bracelet together because it's going to take way too long, right? Um, so know that this project is an easy one that we've done in the past. We've done the exact same project. You can always go back and watch the replays of those. I am going to show you how to get this started and how to finish it off, but I'm not going to do the full bracelet. So we're going to do like the tiniest version of this. Um, but this one always sells out. People love this style and I don't blame you. I love it too. And this one is really cool because it's kind of frosty. So you can wear this one through the winter time, but you've still got flowers on, which I love. All right. So I'm going to show you real quick how to put this together in the most abbreviated version possible. I'm going to use my tying station. Uh, you can use painter's tape to attach, uh, to your surface, do whatever you need to do. Okay, so what I've done is I have taken my jump ring and I've just done a lark's head knot to attach my gray cord that's going to be my base. That gives me two strands, right? Then I'm going to take that and I'm going to loop that over my tying station. Um, if you want to use, like I said, anything else, painter's tape or whatever to attach this to your work surface, go for it. All right, what you're going to do is you are going to thread on your core beads. So the middle of your flower and then your, your individual beads. So don't worry about these outer edges. You're going to thread on one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 13 beads onto your double strands. For us, we're going to thread on two, <laughs> two. And I want to mention that the beads that go in the center of your flowers are white. It's hard to see, but they're white. The ones that are all the other things are just this beautiful frosty blue steel gray. Okay. So just keep that in mind. You're going to alternate. Daddy, but please first put me on a desktop. <laughs> I don't know what he's, he's thinking I'm talking to him and I'm not. So you're going to thread all those rondelles, alternating the white ones and the, and the regular ones. And they do have a drill hole big enough that they will fit onto both strands. Okay. All right. So now... Like I said, we're just doing the very, very abbreviated version of this, okay? So you're gonna thread all those on, way more than just two. We're only doing two for now, okay? Then you're gonna take your, your knotting cord and I'm going to take it underneath my core and I'm gonna find the middle by bringing my two ends together. Okay, and then that's the middle, okay? And we're gonna do square knots. We'll walk you through the square knot. 
All right. And like I said, if you need refreshers on this, because I'm doing very short because we're past the hour mark now, um, you can go back and watch all of the other projects where we've done square knots. But I'm going to take my right handed cord, making a P shape that crosses over the top of our core. Okay. Left crosses over that, goes behind the core and up through that P shape that we just made. And then you pull. That is step one to your square knot. The second step is the exact same thing, just in the opposite direction. We make our backwards P shape going across the core over the top of the core. Okay, you're gonna cross over and then go behind and up through your backwards P shape and pull. Those two steps are gonna give you a single knot. Okay, I know I'm doing this fast, I apologize. All right, you're gonna do a total of six of those. So I'm going to slide that up next to my jump ring, okay? And then I'm going to do five more, okay? So P shape, cross over, go behind, up through, and pull. Backwards P shape, cross over, behind, and up through, and pull. So there's two, we're going to do three, there's three, going to do four, okay. There's five, same steps. P shape on the right, crosses over the core. Left crosses over that, goes behind and up through. Okay. Backwards P shape on the left. Whoops, I didn't pull that tight. Crosses over, goes behind and up through. All right, so we've got one, two, three, four, five. We're gonna do one more and then we're gonna add our beads. Okay. <laughs> Don't jinx me, Brenda. <laughs> Don't jinx me. All right. So when you've got six knots, that's how you're going to finish or that's how you're going to start. And that's how you're going to finish. If you need to adjust the length of your bracelet, this is a great place to do this. So if you need a longer bracelet, add a few more knots here. If you need a shorter bracelet, make it three or four instead of six right? Okay. Now what you're going to do is you're going to slide up one of those beads. This is going to be the core of your flower. So I slid that up. Now I'm going to take three beads on either side of my knotting cords. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to thread on one, two, and three on my right side. And then same thing on the left side. We do one, two, and three on the left. Whoops. Drop those down. All right. Now we're going to do a square knot just like we were doing, but this one has beads involved and this is going to make a flower. Same steps. Doesn't matter that we have beads. We're going to make a P shape crossing over the core, left hand crosses over, goes behind and up through our P shape. And when you pull, that makes your little flower shape, right? Now it's still loose, so we need to set that. So we're gonna take our left cord and do the second step of our square knot, backwards P shape, right cord crosses over, goes up through, okay? and then pull, and that's gonna set your flower, okay? All right, then you're gonna do three knots with nothing, just to give a little space. So there's one, there's the second half of one, there's two, So it's just more square knots. This one just doesn't have any beads. 
and then three. Okay, and then you're going to slide up a, a bead and you're not going to make a flower out of this one. You're just going to make it, you're just going to knot around it. Okay, so right side P shape, left side goes behind and up through and pull. Whoops, <laughs> pull, don't, don't pull too hard. Okay, left side backwards P shape behind and up through. All right. And that's going to lock that in. Okay. So you're just going to alternate this pattern. Okay. So you can see with the sample where I started, there's my jump ring, there's my knots, there's my flower, a single a flower, a single. So you're just going to go all the way around. Okay. And you're going to have a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven flowers. And then one, two, three, four, five, six that are just individual beads without the flower around them. Okay. Now to finish this off, what you're going to do is you are going to do another six knots with nothing on them, just like we did at the beginning. So you do, if we were at the end, right, we would do six knots. Then you would take all of this off. So again, we're not doing the whole thing. I'm just keeping it very, very abbreviated, but still want to be sure that you get all the steps. Okay. So what you're going to do, once you've got your six knots at the end, you're going to take your clasp and you're going to thread your clasp onto your two core cords. Okay. You're going to bring that down right up next to the last knot in your six knots. Again, there's not six knots here. So you're just having to use your imagination a little bit. You're going to take all your cords together. Okay. So your, your clasp is on two of those, but you've got four cords total. And you're just going to tie an overhanded knot. And you're going to tie that knot right up next to where your last macrame knot is. Mine's a little messy. And you may have to pull individually on your strands here. Okay. Mine's not all the way up to the edge, but you get the idea, okay? So you're going to tie a knot. Mine was too far away from my work. You want yours to be right up against the last, okay? Then you want to add some glue to this. I like to add hypo cement. So if you will take a couple of dabs of hypo cement on either side of this knot, let that dry. And then you're going to take four more beads and you're going to put a bead on each one of these and tie a knot on the end to make it stay. And then you're just going to trim it off and you've got the dangles. Now, if you don't like the dangles, take those four beads, use them as earrings and trim this short, but not until your glue has dried, right? You want to put the glue on there, let that dry probably overnight. And then you can cut this off really short. You don't have to have the dangle part, but let the glue dry because that knot is not enough all by itself, right? And that is your bracelet. Now I know we did the very, very abbreviated version of this, but um, I knew that it was going to be like that. We have done this project previously. Um, so you can always go back and rewatch what we did today or any of the other um, times that we've done this. Uh, I just wanted to give you kind of a frosty version of this because I thought it was perfect for the winter time. But also this kind of green color is going to get you through the spring, too. So um, if you you need some flowers in your life, even though it's cold outside, this is a cool one. So it always sells out pretty quickly, too. So don't don't wait too long on these because this is always a really popular style that I put in the shop and you guys seem to like it. So I do, too. I think it's cool and it's easy. Right. This is going to be a fun one. Like if you've got you've got maybe some teenagers coming to your house for uh, the holidays, this might be a good one to sit them down and show them um, square knots, you know, because that's how I started jewelry making as a teenager making macrame, believe it or not. 
it's still popular. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm going to turn you around. We're going to do a quick recap through all of the projects that we have had in today's show. And then I'm going to let you guys go at least until Tuesday or next week, right? Oh, no, that's not true either. I'll be seeing some of you at 4 p.m. Eastern today for our Art Beads show. So there is our bracelet. From this direction, you can really see the colors a little bit better. My bead mat tends to make things very, very dark. So there's our frosty flowers bracelet, which I absolutely love. And then we had this guy, which I also kind of adore, which has our flower and then all of those beautiful chunky crystals and sparkle. And it's just, it's just a pretty one. It really, really is. And then we had our blue goldstone bracelet. That really just shows off the goldstone. I mean, there's nothing else to this one. It's just straightforward stringing, but it really is just showing off those amazing blue goldstone beads. All right, so there was that. We cannot forget, let me grab a bust here, our necklace. Now, this is just as straightforward as it possibly can get. This is just straight stringing, showing off this beautiful strand of tourmaline. Like, that's all. That's that. There's, it doesn't need anything else. <laughs> nothing else. It needs nothing else. It's got that beautiful heart from her diamond on the back. Guys, oh, I, I love a tiny little beaded necklace. So that makes me super, super happy. I hope that you guys love that one. And then we had two pairs of earrings. I don't want to leave those out. We had our lovely purple check glass earrings with the leaves super pretty little sparkle without being like over the top and then last but not least i called these our little sugar plum earrings again in that beautiful purple a little bit of flash a little bit of sparkle easy to wear throw those on with your blue jeans you're good <laughs> super pretty and then, of course, don't forget all of the do-it-yourselves. I've got tons of true do-it-yourselves in the shop. Um, we've got the garnets and the blown glass and the Nautilus pendant with all of that yummy green aventurine. So don't forget about those. You just don't get the findings with those. That leaves it up to you to come up with amazing designs using all of those. Thank you for everybody who has made purchases in my Etsy shop. I can't believe the mystery bags are gone, but I will try to do those one more time. Um, and then it's probably going to be a few more months before I can do those again, but I will try to do another run of the mystery bags. Um, don't forget there is bead soup as well. There is, um, the check bead soup and the acrylic bead soup. So, uh, it's a great way to stock up. If you, if you love bead soup, they're not bad beads, guys, they're gorgeous beads, <laughs> not, not lying like there that's, it's the good stuff. It's the good stuff. Um, so yeah. And that's it for our show today. I will get everybody's packages on the way as soon as possible. Guys, just be patient. Remember that shipping this time of year is insane. I waited on my dog food shipment. It was four days late. So just keep all of that in mind. Be kind to your small business owners who are doing the very best that they can to get packages out as quickly as possible. Once it leaves our hands, then it's up to USPS or whoever we're using to ship with. And sometimes they are slow as molasses this time of year. <laughs> all right i'm so cheesy i can't stand it don't forget to set your reminders 4 p.m eastern time this afternoon for art beads i will see you again there if i don't have an amazing weekend and i will see you next week don't forget we're doing sam's bead box on tuesday at 1 p.m eastern time i love you guys have a great afternoon bye <laughs>